So sorcery is back, I think, permanently this time, hopefully. And starting today, every single person should be able to access the game completely for free for a week. So I figured since my last should you buy sorcery video is extremely outdated, I just give you guys my new and updated opinions on whether or not you should buy sorcery. But before I do that, did you know that 100% of my subscribers who subscribe, super cringe and lame not to sub, you should sub right now, you know, you, it's kind of cringe not to sub. But uh, without further ado, let's get into the content. So the first question on a lot of y'all's minds right now is probably like, you know, how is sorcery back right now? And before I get into my early thoughts on the game, I kind of figured that I might as well go over how the game actually exists right now. Essentially, the previous owner of Sorcery, Fat Fact, sold the game a little while back, and it's been under new management ever since. And low-key, to his credit, bro, after acquiring the game, the new owner got right to work and started adding a bunch of really cool stuff. And to be honest, the game is infinitely better than it ever was before in any point in history because of the new owner. But uh, yeah, that's the rundown on how the game currently exists. Let's talk about what's in the game. First off is the progression in the game. Progression in Sorcery essentially revolves around completing missions and grading up off of them. There's a few different kinds of missions like Hoss's missions, defeating the enemy faction, charging at cursed objects, and even invader missions to kind of give you different options to do while you're progressing. If I'm being totally honest, a lot of the missions are generally pretty stock standard Roblox bandit beater progression, but you know, at least you got options. One kind of mission though isn't really stock standard, it's what I want to talk about right now, and those are the invader missions. An invader mission occurs when you yourself queue into the enemy faction's mission server and you're taxed with eliminating them. Upon doing so, you receive loot about on par with what you get from doing a mission, as well as, you know, experience. No glaze bro, like, I really, really like the stalker missions in this game. I find that devs, in Roblox games specifically, are really incapable of finding a happy medium in terms of mixing PvP in with their progression, and I feel like this is really the closest anyone I've really seen has come. Of every 10 missions you do, maybe 2 or 3 will have invaders in them, so it's a pretty unobtrusive feature, and it also has the added benefit of making sense in-universe, while also introducing players to the PvP of the game, which I think is a really nice touch. Speaking of the PvP, that's the next topic of discussion, because the PvP in Sorcery is honestly some of my favorite in any game, ever. The PvP in Sorcery is parry-based, similar to Deep Oaken, where M1s are your main tools, and your ability slash curse technique kinda supplement your M1s. As viewers of this channel may know, I love Deep Woken. It's probably my favorite game on Roblox, or honestly otherwise, to be honest. And a really big reason for that is Deep Woken's combat. And although these days it seems like they're trying to do whatever they can to just utterly destroy that combat system, it still holds a very special place in my heart. I feel like I've played and tried every single game that's been marketing themselves as having like Deep Woken-like combat, but I feel like I can honestly say this game comes the closest. Not only do the parry timings feel precise and smooth, like Deep Woken, but so do the M1s and Criticals. I also find that the base combat in Sorcery is a lot faster and more fluid than Deep Woken, which I personally really like. Besides the base combat though are the abilities and curse techniques, which you know, let's start with the abilities. In Sorcery there are 4 or 5 different skill trees, Cursed Energy, Fortitude, Agility, Strength, and one that I may or may not be forgetting all of which contain a variety of skills, passive or active. To be totally honest and blunt, like there really isn't much variety, and most players are typically gonna go one of a few builds, but I will say, you know, the moves are cool. I will forever glaze the way that Sorcery puts impact on their moves, it just makes them feel so ridiculously satisfying. And they're still telegraphed properly, so you can actually parry them. The final thing in the combat section is curse techniques, and you know, low key, that might be like the most important thing in a Jujutsu Kaisen game. Now this is gonna sound crazy, but I honestly believe Sorcery has the best curse techniques of any JJK Roblox game. And I'm not just talking about like VFX and how they look. There's a lot of attention to detail and hidden mechanics with these curse techniques, so you know, like, pay attention. Another thing I really love about the curse techniques in this game is that there are no real unusable curse techniques and that you can adopt really whatever playstyle you want. Let me use myself as an example here. My personal build in Sorcery, or I should say the build that I'm proccing right now, uses the ratio technique. For those who don't know this about me, I'm a Nobara Coper and I'm a Nanami Glazer. I think Nanami is cool as fuck and I feel like no games ever seem to capture how fucking sick he is. And I really like how underappreciated curse techniques in this game, like Ratio, Boogie Wookie, Curse Speech, and even fucking Projection Sorcery all have a place in revival in this game. And I feel like I can attribute this mainly to the lack of a rarity system, not forcing the devs to make things like Limitless infinitely better than everything else. Especially in a game like Sorcery, where there's only so many ways you can invest your stats, having this level of diversity is really important so you just don't end up with every nigga on the same fucking build. 
The last thing I really want to talk about in this video is the attention to detail in sorcery, just kind of overall. I'm going to say something that's going to sound weird, but just humor me for a second. Sorcery feels like a JJK game. Like when I play sorcery, I feel like I'm a sorcerer beating up curses and fighting the good fight against the endless wave of curses trying to put that work in on humanity. And sorcery is right there buying into my delusions with these strong ass punches the game's giving me, bro. I'm sitting here throwing slugs like Itadori Yuji. But even besides like the little tiny things, there's so many things in universe that I feel like sorcery captures so perfectly. First off is the Black Flash. Recently in sorcery, Black Flash was changed in how it was obtained. Instead of it just being a skill that you unlock, you have to awaken it now. You can learn a specific skill to increase the chances of it happening, but at the end of the day, it's all up to whether or not the sparks of black wanna bless your ass. I don't wanna spoil too much about the Black Flash Awakening, but just know that you'll probably know if you got it. And make sure you clip it, cause I wish I did, bro. The next thing that I think sorcery handles beautifully, or at least I think that they're handling better now, is the Curse Technique Awakening. Like before, Awakening Your Curse Technique happens through the dream world, which you can enter at any point above level 50 randomly after completing a mission, or manually above level 25 with sleeping medicine. Once you enter the dream world, you're tasked with finding your soul and interacting with it. You find your soul by following around a twinkling sound, it's, it's very hard to miss. Once you interact with your soul, you're teleported inside of a parkour course, and I, I, I can already hear y'all niggas in the car, oh fuck, parkour, ah, oh, parkour, ah, wah. And believe me, bro, like, I was right there too, but believe me when I say this parkour is actually good. But to explain why this parkour is good, let me give you an example of bad parkour. Let me just pick one at random, I don't know, the Type Soul Res obby. In Type Soul, movement really isn't a big part of the game, and it reflects in the obby, because the obby is really just a series of basic jumps, leading up until the final jump, which is an even more basic jump but it's longer this time. Unlike Type Soul though, Sorcery does have movement mechanics, and in order to beat the obby, you need to master and use every single one of them. There is no artificial difficulty, and literally every jump is exactly as it seems. If you happen to fail the parkour, on subsequent Dream World runs, you'll respawn closer to the orb. But if you want me to be honest, failing doesn't really feel that bad. I will always hold the opinion that at least in video games, it always feels better to know that I fucked up than to know that the game fucked me. And this dumbass long jump bullshit in Type Soul really made me feel like the game was just letting me have it, bro. Cause you know, nothing feels better than having to wait for 30 minutes because, cause, cause you didn't jump good enough, man, sorry. I think I mainly covered everything I wanted to say besides maybe the movement, but like that kind of goes for itself. Now to talk about whether or not you should buy the game. This might sound crazy based on like the massive glaze session that I just had, but I don't think you should buy the game right now at least. As of the time I'm recording this video, the game is literally free for seven days. You can play it, you can try it, you can do whatever you want in game right now. And once this playtest is done, the game is gonna go back to wave ones only being able to play it. In November though, the game is gonna release for 400 Robux for all other players. Even with the game being as good as it is, it, there really is no end game to do once you're done building your character. I guess you could just walk around and like beat up people, but like, you know, that's only fun for so long. I would personally wait for there to be like a fully finished product here before I swipe my credit card, but you know, if you want to spend $10 for some reason, I can't legally stop you. At the time I'm recording this, it's my birthday, so if you don't subscribe, you're actually a bad person. So um, subscribe right now. Goodbye.